Hey everybody, it's me Fadi and welcome to Fadi Aquarium channel. Today I'm speaking about Acropora corals. I'll talk about lightning and flow requirements, their placement in the aquarium, feeding and propagation of these corals. Acropora is a huge genus of some of the most beautiful and stunning reef building corals. Acropora corals are highly sensitive to changes in water chemistry, temperature, nutrient levels, water flow and lightning. Why many reefers like Acropora? For me and many reefers, an SPS dominated tank full of healthy, vibrant Acropora colonies is love at first sight. Although the SPS tank often lacks the beautiful movement of the other types of corals like LPS. Acropora comes in many colors. A colony grown in one system can change color and shape dramatically in another system, depending on light, flow and nutrients. The coral tries to maximize its access to light and flow. In aquariums that have stronger flow, the branches can grow thicker, while in areas of less flow, they tend to be thinner and extend faster. Acropora can have many different growth forms like branching staghorn, bushy, cluster, bottom brush, tabular, plate columns and other growth shapes. And sometimes, one Acropora can combine more than one growth form. The challenge of keeping Acropora is related to their high demands for lightning, water flow and stable water chemistry. The problem is not in initially providing the perfect environment, the challenge is maintaining it. Lightning, flow and chemistry changes as Acropora grows. If their requirements are not met, a perfectly healthy colony of Acropora might become a dead white skeleton. Corals, including Acropora, have a special symbiotic relationship with dinoflagellates called zooxanthellae that live inside their tissue. Zooxanthellae is usually brown in color, and the coral regulates how many of them are present in its flesh. Too little light will cause the coral to turn brown to get more nutrients. Too much light and the coral will expel more of the zooxanthellae and cause coral bleaching. In general, Acropora needs intense lightning. I feel Acropora do better in intensity around 250 to 350 bar. In nature, most Acropora are found in some of the strongest current areas of the reef and they benefit greatly from strong water movement in our aquariums. As most SPS corals, the minimum tank flow should be 40 times per hour of the tank size. That means for a 100 gallon tank, you will need a 4000 gallon per hour. Water movement is essential for bringing nutrients to coral and more importantly, removing waste away from them. Successfully growing Acropora quickly comes with a downside. Large colonies cut down flow significantly and over time choke off flow to other nearby colonies or even to the inner parts of itself. As colonies get larger, it's important to pay attention to changing flow demands and adding more flow if necessary. Secondly, wave makers need to be cleaned regularly to remove algae buildup to keep the flow at the optimal levels. Acropora corals need to be placed in high light and flow areas for tabling and thick branching across Try to avoid adding any corals under it. When these corals grow, it will prevent the light from reaching any coral under it. Also try to keep good space between the frags so they don't touch and kill each other when they are grown into a large colonies. Acropora are more sensitive to water parameters than most of the other corals in the aquarium trade. You need to keep stable temperature, salinity and major elements. Calcium, alkalinity and magnesium are the major parameters needed to be maintained for Acropora to be able to build its stony skeleton. They require both clean water and consistent high levels of major ions to maintain stony coral growth. I talked about testing and supplementing these major elements in details in how to build and maintain a reef tank series from episode number 15 to episode number 18. For water cleanliness, you need to keep nitrate and phosphate at low levels. Elevated phosphates can lead to poor coloration and possibly nuisance algae issues. Nitrate is an indicator of poor water quality and can cause stony corals to crash altogether if not lowered. The natural levels of nitrate in sea waters are between 5 ppm and 40 ppm. For Acropora, nitrate is best to be less than 5 ppm. Phosphate levels should be much lower, around 0.01 ppm. There are many strategies for keeping nitrates and phosphates under control. You can find the links for some videos on how to control and reduce nitrates and phosphates in the description below. Supplementing Acropora with trace elements will make the acro colors pop out. Each trace element is responsible for a specific color. For example, potassium promotes red colors and iron promotes green colors. Remember not to overdose trace elements, as these elements can be toxic to your corals if overdosed. Dosing amino acids is very helpful to keep Acroporas in optimal health, especially in ultra-low nutrient systems. I use Acropower on my tank. Branching Acropora with thin branches are easy to frag. Just cut them with coral cutter and glue the frag to a frag plug. Some large or thick branching acros and tabling acros are hard to cut with a coral cutter. 
In these cases, a coral band saw is a better option. Use a coral wet saw if you want to turn an entire colony into frags quickly without stressing them. Wet saws continually cool the blade with water and cut cleanly. You can also add a few drops of iodine dip to the water in the saw while cutting. Treat it well, an Acropora colony can be one of the fastest growing and most beautiful species in a reef aquarium. Neglect it, Acropora can transform itself into a dead white skeleton in a matter of days or even a few hours. That's it for today, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and share and happy reef keeping.